After a relatively quiet year or two in terms of Blender's development, suddenly there's an awful lot to talk about. I was going to make lots of different videos talking about all the stuff that I'm excited about happening in the Blender space right now, but I thought I would just put it all together into one video to keep you guys in the loop, because there really is a lot of stuff happening right now. There's been huge changes announced to Blender's leadership. Also, we have Blender 5.0 just around the corner, which in my opinion is the biggest update to Blender since at least 2.8 and possibly all time. My latest course, Isometric Spaces, has just received a huge new update. Module 2 adds 6 hours of bonus content, covering the creation of an animated cyberpunk hackers layer. Isometric Spaces is a really beginner friendly course, but this module ramps up the challenge with some really cool effects like holograms and procedural lighting effects. Right now you can save 40% on all of my courses with the promo code FLASH40 at Gumroad. You'll find a link in the description. So here's the new Blender Foundation board. Yeah, so that was one of the things that happened. Ton Rosenthal, the original creator of Blender and the longtime cult leader that we have, has announced that he's stepping down as CEO at the end of the year. Now, if you follow the development of Blender closely or the internal makeup of the Blender Institute and Foundation, this isn't really something that's probably going to come as a surprise to you because it's something that Ton has openly spoke about for a few years now that he was getting ready to step down. But if you don't pay attention, that might sound like scary news because it's a whole new team coming in. And what does that mean? So Francesco City is taking over as CEO. And as a matter of fact, he's already been doing the job unofficially since the start of this year. He really cares about Blender a lot and he's been involved with it for a long time, as has the rest of the guys on the board. So there's really nothing to worry about. If you're thinking that Blender's going to suddenly like sell to Adobe or something like that, it's just not going to happen. You're probably not going to see any like major shifts in how Blender operates. So with that being said, let's talk about the really interesting stuff. Blender 5.0 is about to move next week into beta development stage. That means that it's bug fixing only from now on until the official release, which means we know exactly what features Blender 5.0 is going to have. And so far, it looks like it's going to be awesome. We have features that the community has been requesting for a really long time. We have features that the developers have been promising for a really long time. And we have some breaking changes that I think everybody actually needs to know about. So one of those features that have been promised for a long time is geometry node presets. Since Geometry Nodes came around, the developers started talking about the idea that we could potentially get rid of modifiers entirely. We could replace them with Geometry Nodes that were built basically as a preset. So you wouldn't have to build the Geometry Nodes yourself, it would just be there added like a modifier is right now. But the difference is, because it's Geometry Nodes, you can go in there and make changes yourself to how the modifier works. We have the first early versions of that in Blender 5.0. One of the coolest presets that we have right now comes in the form of the array. Let's say that you're working on a project and you have a warehouse with loads of stacks of cardboard boxes, badly stacked cardboard boxes. Well, you could do that with an array, but they would all just kind of be pointing up the same way. If you wanted to randomize certain aspects of other books, you would have to use geometry nodes and it would take a massive amount of setup. But now if you go to the modifiers, generate, and we go down the bottom here, you can see under this line, we have three new ones. One of them is Array, and if we select this, at first it looks kind of like the regular Array modifier, but we now have a Randomize, and we can randomize the offset a little bit, right? So they're all just kind of randomly off to one side, and we can randomize the rotation. And this is all stuff that people have been asking for for a very, very long time, and we finally have it because of geometry nodes. But let's just turn this off for a second. Another feature that people have been asking for for a long time with the array is to change the shape. We can now do circular arrays in Blender without loads of messing around. Hallelujah. So you can just change how many of these you want, or you can do it by angle. And this is an absolute lifesaver. I'm so glad this is here. There's also uh, other versions for things like curve, or transform right so you can just pull it out like this obviously the curve is based on the shape of a curve which you'll have to add 
So that's something that I'm very excited about. If we go over to geometry nodes and take a look at this, this is the amount of work you would have to put in to set up this geometry node setup yourself. So it's going to save a lot of time. So if you were paying attention there, you may have noticed that one of the other modifiers was called scatter on surface. So now we can scatter objects really simply. One of the most useful features in geometry nodes is scattering instead of using a particle system. Among things, it's much more efficient for Blender, but it takes a long time to set up all those nodes all the time. So now it's just a case of adding this modifier, select your object and it scatters. And then you have all of the controls that you would expect for things like density. And of course, under transform, we have random transformations where we can transform the direction for instance, or the scale. And we can have a lot of controls here that would take a long time to set up with geometry nodes. Once again, it's a huge node network to get this working. And now that's just going to be a simple modifier. So about 20 years ago, when the movie industry really started to transition over to digital media, the Academy of Motion Pictures, AKA the guys who give out the Oscars, decided that there should be one single standard that everybody could use for color management. There was a problem at the time with lots of people using different color management solutions and what looked right on one team's hardware and maybe the editing software they used might look terrible for someone else in the pipeline. So they came up with the Academy Color Encoding System or ACES and it's something that people have been asking for in Blender natively for a very long time. There was a workaround solution that you could use, but it would kind of mess up how the whole Blender interface looked as well. Essentially, what it does is it gives you a standardized system that most people in the industry are using. If you're worried about Blender being like an industry standard or whatever, well, this is definitely something that most of the industry uses to handle color. It gives you a really wide gamut of colors, which means that technically in the render you can have, even if you can't necessarily display it on screen, you can have pretty much all the colors that are visible to the human eye. And it also supports high dynamic range. Now, every time that this topic comes up of color management, whenever we get a new look transform or something in Blender, the forums are always full of people saying, why not just use ACES? Cause that's what I use at work or whatever. So there's a lot of people I am sure is going to be very happy about this. And Blender 5 does come with one huge breaking change. Any files that you save in Blender 5.0 or afterwards, you will not be able to open in earlier versions of Blender with the caveat that you can kind of open them in Blender 4.5 because they already knew that this change was coming when 4.5 was developed. So the actual blend file itself is changing. It will still look like a regular blend file, but architecturally on the inside, how it saves information about your blend scene is going to be quite different. This has been done for a really good reason. It's because the way that the blend file system was set up doesn't really allow for very large data blocks. Data blocks are just pieces of information in Blender, like uh, the information about an object or a material. So right now it isn't really possible to have really huge meshes inside Blender. And by huge, I'm talking like potentially hundreds of millions or tens of millions of verts. Blender just can't handle that sort of information inside the current blend file system. So the new blend file system is going to solve that problem. But like I said, it comes with its own problem that if you ever wanted to open a new file in older versions of Blender, you just wouldn't be able to do that. So that's probably only going to be a problem if you ever bring your files back into older versions to use certain add-ons that are no longer supported or whatever. But for most people, that's probably not going to really make a difference. So those are just a few of the things that are happening in the Blender space right now that I thought everybody should be aware of and look out for them coming. I'll be making a video about all of the features that are coming with Blender 5.0 that I think are worth talking about because this video is nowhere near exhaustive. There's tons and tons of stuff coming with Blender 5.0 that I think is going to be really cool. I've actually just discovered a new one of them in the last few days. Uh, the presets that I mentioned with modifiers, there's going to be a similar thing with node groups in the compositor. So you can just drag and drop certain compositing effects that are already pre-made in Blender into the compositor, which is going to be really cool. So keep your eyes out for that video. That'll be in a few weeks time. And of course, check out the link in the description where you can get all of my courses, including 
the isometric spaces course that's just been updated for 40% off right now if you use the code FLASH40.